What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Center for Stingray Biology. Today I got a special episode for you. We are going to talk about stingrays obviously, but we're going to talk about albino stingrays, okay? I had a birth <clears throat> I had a birth just today um, and I want to show you the pups and I want to explain uh, to you what exactly these pups are because um, there's a term out there called Red Lucy and a lot of people don't fully understand what that means and we will explain it to you so come on let's go oh I want to show everybody real quick in the tank what we got going on here obviously we got an albino right there there's some babies right there and I will pull those babies out to show you we got some these are albino pearl hats which are the pure strain of pearls oh we got scared and then let's see this guy down here you see that is a hybrid okay that's a hybrid that came from albino pearl crossed with something else and i'll show you more in this basket here some more of these albino hybrid pets that's in essence that's what they really are okay people don't understand what red lucy is it was a term that a breeder in Asia used to name their stingrays. And I'm assuming they came up with red because it's albino, and they used the term Lucy probably because they followed a naming convention from the reptile industry where some snakes are called Lucy's for luc leucistic, uh, and, and they just came up with the name Red Lucy. But what I want to tell you guys is Red Lucy is not a string of stingrays okay it's just a name that they made up for what is technically just an albino hybrid okay but a lot of people um, new to the hobby who hasn't been around since when this uh, naming convention came about they kind of get lost and they don't understand that it's just a name given to the ray okay but and they think that it's a pure string but it is not a pure string so let's come over here or let's show them this basket okay because what I'm producing here is also, I'm producing my own strain of albino hybrids, okay? Now, I don't necessarily follow the name Red Lucy because that's a name somebody else used to name their race, and it kind of became just a standard naming convention. But here, what I'm breeding are albinos, right? I, I cross the albino pearl with, an albino, with uh, another hybrid to create hets, and that's what you guys see here. Now, not every single one is going to look this nice, okay? I have more over here, but these are the selected ones out that I'm going to be using to breed in the future. And when I breed these back together, I'm going to increase the percentage chance of me getting albino with that type of pattern. Obviously, we're doing this because we want to create something nice and beautiful. But there are also going to be ones that come out looking more like pearl, and in some cases, kind of looking Matoro-like. And um, I've even heard some people say that, oh, I got some Red Lucy's that was crossed with Matoro or Pearl, um, or Pearl Red Lucy. What does that mean? Majority of the albino fish on the market today, uh, whether pure or hybrid, stems from the original strain of Pearl. When I have a batch of babies born, I'm gonna have random hybrid type, hybridized patterns I'm gonna have spotted pattern and I'm gonna have some that look like pearl and that's just it's just a mixed bag and that's what happens when you uh, breed for uh, hybrids for you guys out there don't don't just fall into the name Red Lucy and think it's a higher valued animal you still ultimately have to go by what the fish look like and the pattern and and so forth and I will show you in this litter of pups I've already took a good look at it and it's a perfect example that I can show you of what I just explained. But first, before I pull these pups out, I gotta make a basket, I gotta make some room. I'm um, running out of space here. And uh, the problem also is, whoa. All right, the basket scared them. I mean, relax a little bit. Okay, so I was fixing that pond liner over there, right? And I was supposed to transfer these animals back over, but I am having yet again another problem with that liner. So everyone is kind of overcrowded right now in here. And uh, I'm just gonna have to try to, you know, make do and do, make do with um, what I got for now until I can solve that problem. Okay, so let me just really quickly string up this basket so we can start 
catching some of these cups because I'm anxious to get it out of there as well. Uh oh, I see a little piece of sperm floating right down there. You see it on? So they also remade it as well, which is a good thing. Okay. Now, given I have a bunch of males and a bunch of females in this tank, um, I actually know which is the female, but I do not know which is the male. All right. But I can take a, a guess, obviously, because it has the, the pups were born with the hybridized pattern. Okay. So I know it's not the pure albino male. Okay. It has to be one of the het, um, the het. Uh, what do you call it? The het hybrid males. What I want to do is, I actually wanted to move these guys out of this basket into that new basket that I just strung up, and then put the new ones in here because these guys are getting kind of big in here anyway. So I'm going to do that right now, and then you guys get to see each individual one. Okay. Uh, even this tray is a little bit big, but all right. Let's bring it over real quick. That's a beautiful fish, okay? I can only imagine how nice it's gonna be after I turn it into a albino with that kind of pattern. Okay. You show everybody? Really? As you guys can see, these are definitely selected out pups. I've bred quite a few batches and it's taken me quite some time to accumulate a good collection for future breeding stock like this, okay? Because given that it's a first generation hybrid, every batch doesn't produce many with, the, with a special pattern like this. It has taken me, you know, at least four, five batches to be able to accumulate a group like this it's a very it takes you know quite a long time to put together a breeding program like this um just so you guys can you know understand the amount of work and effort that was involved or goes into you know breeding something like this so they're all in here now and now that little basket is ready so let's start grabbing some of these babies all right so this guy right here i'm going to show you this one first and uh, we had four pups. Come on. All right, let's get a good look at it. Can you get in there? You see it? It's a very plain, ordinary fish with a couple of spots. It, this guy, I can already tell, is probably going to look more of a Motoro type of pattern as it gets older. Maybe not even so much pearl, but more Matoro-like. And if there's any uh, extra pattern that might develop out of it, we won't know until this pup grows up. And this one is a male. So now, in terms of creating a breeding program, that's probably not something I would want to use because it doesn't have the nice pattern and plus the fact that it's a male. For breeding, um, the main focus is getting more females. Okay, actually, I don't want to show that one yet. Okay, he's up on the wall over here. Let me just bring it right over. Give me, pass me the trailer. It's right there for me. I just want to show everyone this other one now. And I need to sex it also. Now you see, it's got the same type of pattern as the first one. Right, the first one is right over there. They got the same type of pattern. If you guys remembered when I explained um, rec recessive genes and the breeding and how, uh, how what's the percentage of heads and, and normal. So now you see out of four pups, 50% look like this, okay? And this one's a female. So typically with albino breeding, you get 25% when, when, it's, when it's head to head, you get 25% albino <coughs> um, and 25% uh, normal and 66% is a genetic carrier. So now we got those two. Now I'm gonna show you this one. Now this one's not albino, 
but it's got a different pattern. It's got the special pattern that we're looking for. So now you can see out of a batch of four, only one came out with the unique pattern. You see? And now you can see the resemblance of what this looks like compared to the bigger pups over there. And that's what it will become like when it gets older. So now let's check what the sex of this is. Now this one, I want a female. Come on. All right, guys. So we got a female. Okay, that's perfect. So this fish will go towards the breeding program. Just to break it up for you so you guys understand what's going on here. This basket right here is all males, okay? And that other basket that I just moved over is all females, okay? So I got four females here. Now I got a new female, so great. Now I got five females as part of my breeding program. And I got also one, I also got five males over there. So it's an even sex ratio. So now, we're gonna grab the albino one, okay? And this was the, the whole goal of this breeding program, right? Is to create an albino stingray with a hybridized pattern, a specialized, unique pattern, okay? So let's see if this fish has it. Now, realistically, the chances of it having it, I think is quite low, but I already see some difference to it, some uniqueness to it. Can you get over it? Yes. Okay, now the spotting doesn't quite look like traditional pearl spotting. Okay, but it is, let's try turning on the light. Okay, there, you can see better. Okay, and it's still very young. It still needs um, to grow and develop. You can see there is a lot of spotting, very tight spotting. Um, I can see the little uh, white rings around the golden dot. Okay, so this fish is gonna be more of a spotted pattern than uh, versus a weird, like mixed up type of pattern. Now I expect majority of this batch to resemble pearl because these are about 75% pearl genetics. Given that the mother is 100% pearl and then the father is a hybrid, but the father is 50% pearl and 50% some other random mix. So when bred back together, 75% is gonna look like that. We're already very fortunate to get this one het right here with that kind of pattern, okay? Now I'm gonna, oh, let me sex this albino first. And this albino is a male, it looks like. So let me put it in there so we can now all compare and look side by side. Let me turn on the light, that will help a little bit. These guys were very plain, okay? These, the first two that we caught was very plain color. So as compared to the albino, you can see very big difference, a lot more spotting. So definitely the albino and this guy right here is going to be something special as they develop. I wanna show you guys real quick who the mother is. The mother is this albino one right here. She's under the basket. Um, so it's hard for me to get a good look at it. And that's the pure. And then this is a male right here. Okay, this dark one right here. Most likely, it's probably that male. There's another male in here, uh, but that is a albino pearl male. So most likely, it's this guy. Let me turn on the light here. A little bit better. Yeah, there we go. You can see a little bit better. Okay, and there's the mother. So I would say overall, this has been a successful birth of being able to create what we call albino hybrid or what other breeders call red lucy. Later on, when these other ones grow up and I breed them back to each other, I will have a higher percentage of the specialized pattern, which then that is the ultimate goal to produce higher numbers. But right now, given first generation, I was able to produce a couple that's already very good. I hope this helps you guys to understand what the term Red Lucy means, okay? Please don't be mistaken that it is a pure strain or species. It is not. It's just a name. Somebody randomly called it, just like when I had those um, Galaxy P14 hybrids that was crossed with Black Diamond, right? And I asked you guys to help me come up with a name for that particular strain or batch. You guys did come up with some very good suggestions, okay? Now, if had I named my Stingrays, whatever that name was, whatever, Galaxy, whatever, Super Diamond, okay? 
and as time goes on, people start picking up on their naming convention, it's still not a pure strain, it's still a hybrid, okay? And again, that's what Red Lucy is. So I hope this clarifies things for everybody, and not all are the same, all right? It's all still graded out depending on the quality. You have to judge for yourself before you buy one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this episode. I'm always here to do my best to teach you what I can, when I can, all right? So please don't forget, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a good thumbs up. And of course, hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload a video, all right? Take care, guys. I have some in the front also, just to show you as well. This way you can see what is the final product of all this hard work. We already saw the one little pup that was born today, but I'm gonna show you this tank over here. I think you guys have seen it before. Let me click on the light real quick.